I have to be. I am ready. Whoever, wherever, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you come from, eh? I'm going to stand in this arena and that name has to shake everything. So if you think you can stand that shaking, come in. Goals start with dreams, big or small. That cherished aspiration, ambition, or ideal. We all have them. The strong desire to know what more we can become in one lifetime is what pushes us to start, to grow, to reinvent ourselves. And while at it, there's mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual wins, sometimes losses, that challenge our journeys to being what we dream of. Wazo Dazo presents Being. What up, what up? It's your boy Rionga, aka Ru, and this is Being Rionga. I mean, both work. Rionga is Rionga. I've learned that I do the Ru for, in my mind, branding purposes, just because the thing rolls off the tongue, and guys like saying that. It's Rionga. Yeah. Um, I spent a lot of time beating myself up. Like, I really focused on the negative things in my life a lot. Like, it's like I was looking for a reason why things would not go well sometimes, and I made the decision, unconscious decision, that was me. So I was always happy to beat myself up worse than everybody else who I would skip that. It didn't help anybody. It didn't build, it didn't do anything for you. Tutuse happened and I, I almost got swallowed. Um, here's what went wrong. Straightforward. There's no way to explain to someone what it's like for everyone to suddenly, suddenly be praising you, singing your praises, and people wanting to do you favors, and everybody wanting your ear. Everybody wanting you to hear what they have to say and everybody wanting to tell you something. I would say it scared me because I had never had to think about one song before. For me, I just did songs. I never had to think about one song before. And I think as a result, I tried to make sure to not do another tutu. I tried to focus on just doing music that I liked. And I was in a place back then where I personally was misled about where I was standing. What I mean by that is I wanted mass market appeal, but I was very content to be appreciated by a few. And when, you, when you're big in church, you don't necessarily have to be big outside of church. So, so for me, I was comfortable, to be honest. The difference between church life and outside church life is the groups of people that you meet with for church, right? No matter how they sound, no matter how deep and how spiritual you guys sound amongst each other, they all have to go and do life. So it's a very interesting thing. Church, church is supposed to be really your life. But it, 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 as, for, as, as, as long as I've known it for a long time, it's this established set of principles and that has a certain language. It's a very exclusive club. You know, so you, and, and, and you can't stay inside the church. And by church, I mean the church walls forever. You have to go home, you have to build relationships, you have to build a career, you have to build a family. The people who try to bring church into every aspect of their life, that type of church, they usually do very badly. They usually look at as really weird, you know? It just, that's the difference. Like, church is a part of life. It should be a core but you have to deal with everything differently. A major keystone habit for me in the last few years has been meditation, specifically my future. Like something I learned was if you do not decide by imagination what you want your end goal to be, 
will be decided for you. And no one is going to build a better future for you than yourself. So if you haven't built any, you are going to get less than that. The minute I started having, looking at my end goal and focusing there, it stopped making the little contradictions in the middle make me feel like I was, had failed or had gone off track. As long as I could still see where I was trying to go, that's where I stayed. And it, it has done a lot because I've seen that things in life, that what we call life, eh? there are things in front of your eyes, they are not permanent. None of them are. There is nothing you can see that cannot move. There is no artist you can see who is big that cannot become invisible and vice versa. There's no building you see that cannot be broken. Like, so because of that, I realized that things that happen to me, I can have a million dollars today and in 10 minutes it can be gone and in 50 minutes I can have 20 million. There is no rules to the things you can see except that they are not permanent. So I really focus on my imagination. That's a keystone habit for me. I see my future, I decide. This is what I want to do. This is how big I'm going to be. Like I said, doing that over the last couple of years. At the moment, I'm struggling with being new. Like, I am not the guy. I'm not the guy people knew. I'm not. Like, I'm really, really not. <laughs> I'm unapologetic. I am the best at what I do, and I've just started. I have huge aims, and I have huge intentions, and they're all going to happen. And sometimes I, I still, I'm still finding myself trying to shrink for people, while at the same time being like, I can never go back there, ever. That's not happening, because people sell you this thing of humility, we will give you a better life, or whatever. And, and I think people confuse humility with humiliation. Like, humiliate yourself to make people feel good. So because I did that for so long, there are times when I struggle with, with that. So I, I struggle with being a king, basically. I'm getting used to it, but I'm very much that. It's a struggle, but I know where I'm going. I mean, the entertainment world being judgmental, how I cope is, I've already taken the bullets. <laughs> you see, I think, in the beginning, with all the praise, I was so worried about what people thought. I really tried to be the best version in front of people. And I still, I'm still, I still respect myself and my brand and the things that I try to be mindful of. But man, I've taken every possible beating this entertainment industry can give me. I still love it. But we're past that whole thing of will they, if they swing, will I make it, will I what? past that like that already happened so for me i just know it's judgmental i know it's a space i know it's a space that i am an authority and a king in but i walk in and i walk out when i leave that stage when i leave that camera i leave that spotlight i leave everything there i leave all the judgments there i don't really care i have to be i am ready the things that are coming for me even if I know they're coming, I don't know what form they're going to come in, but I'm ready because this is what I was born for. And, and I, I've, I've, I've hid away from this for so long. Like, it's almost been comforting not to get into that terrain and say, we go. Whoever, wherever, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you come from, I'm going to stand in this arena and that name has to shake everything. So if you think you can stand that shaking, come in. What would need to happen in the next five years? I have to be a global name. I no longer want to be a local conversation alone. That's for better or for worse. Whether they say I am or I am not, it has to be on a global scale. People who can't even speak English or speak my language need to know the name. Five years is even too long. Like that, that is one of the things. Another one is all my people have to be taken care of. Just my people for starters. You know, like my family, my, all the needs of the, the, my kids, all my responsibilities. Like now we've gotten to the point that if this is the gift God gave me to provide among other things, it is now time for it to provide. So that's, those are very important parts. And I have to be able to enjoy it. I have to be able to have the capacity and the resource to do what I want and enjoy it. 
the deepest I've had to pull myself out of actually was before all this. Like, I was in the States, I was, I was really enjoying life. But I wasn't really sure. Now, at that time, the worst thing was I used to watch called, something called Behind the, behind the St Hollywood, no, VH1. They used to do this Behind the Story of the Legends. And all those legends had bad endings. All of them, like somehow, like most of them, they never wound up, you know, that one became a president or that one became a real estate. No, that one drugs, this one what, this one struggled, this one. Like it was so much. So I thought like, oh my God, if I, the big I become as an artist, the most likely I am going to be in trouble. So, and I was already experiencing the benefits of that. So there's a time where I got to a place where I could literally see a black hole in front of me, yet I couldn't see it, but I could see it. There have been multiple times I've come to the end of my things. Multiple. So for me, that was one of them. And the other one was this thing when, 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 when the music like had almost like disappeared. The thing I would say I didn't need to really pull myself off, but I, I, it got to a point where some people came to me and they said, you're not doing music anymore. And that's the problem. Like, whatever it is you think you're doing, eh, that you're not doing music anymore, that's a problem. And so I've never pulled myself out of anything, but those two were defining moments for me because that's when I started again, even when I had no name. What you'd say was no name. I didn't count it as a name because guys were like, ah, Ryongo, Iwakabi, but I didn't exist in this current space. But, but I'd stopped. Like guys came and they said, no, bro, you, you have to, I don't care what you do, eh, but you have to make music and you have to put it out. So those two. So for me personally, I've definitely, I've definitely had to come to a place where I'm like, you know what, I'm Ugandan, eh? but I don't think like you people. I don't move like you people. And it's okay. Wazo Dazo presents.